Hello, good people. Thank you for joining us for another episode of Between Frets, a space where female musicians meet and discuss all things music. I am your host, LaCole Rose, and this is day 837.5 of the quarantine, aka house arrest. Um, honestly, I think it's day 24, and me being an introvert, I honestly don't mind. Those extroverts, please don't stone me. Um, I'm at home, of course, like everyone should be, and I am, I'm enjoying my space, my music, my books. I'm enjoying the fridge a little too much, but other than that, it's, I don't see a problem with it. And um, those extroverts who are dying to get outside, just stay in there, hang in there a little while longer, a couple more weeks, hopefully it's over soon, we can all get out and enjoy each other. We can enjoy getting toilet paper and water and hand sanitizer in peace without wearing masks. Although, I think the mask may become a fashion statement. I'm no seamstress, but I've even made a few myself, which I think are kind of nifty, but hopefully this ends soon. We can all get out back to normal or whatever the new normal will be. Have the faith, stay positive. We're gonna get through this. And it's just amazing how many of the creatives, the artists have come out of the woodwork to lift everyone with the DJing uh, tutorials, daily concerts, free concerts. And I'm talking about major artists down to the local artists, to the people who have just picked up an instrument the day before to learn a new um, trade or to learn a new instrument, to learn different languages. It's just, it's, it's now the time for creatives just to explore and you know do what you need to do or learn new instruments or just get more into your craft and that's the good part about this quarantine even if it's uh talking to family and friends that you wouldn't normally talk to mending relationships and some relationships that you may need to leave in quarantine permanently all this we can use to a positive and we'll be out of this soon and as i said creatives are now just helping us through this time and speaking of creatives we have an amazing amazing guest for you on the show coming up we have Yasmin Williams. She is from Northern Virginia. What I call her is a composer, folk, soul artist. Uh, she really cannot be put in a box, but she is amazing. She plays the guitar, bass, banjo. And I've even seen her play the bow with her guitar. We're definitely going to speak to her about that. So y'all sit down, relax, get you a nice cup of tea, wine, water, whatever you need, kick back and enjoy this episode coming up of Between Frets with Yasmin Williams. See you in a minute. And we are back, good people. We have the amazing Yasmin Williams. How are you today? I'm doing very well, thank you. That is awesome. Where are you in the world right now? I am in Woodbridge, Virginia, Northern Virginia. Awesome, awesome. How's everything going out in Virginia? Pretty crazy right now with the coronavirus stuff. I'm just trying to stay in the house and avoid people. <laughs> which is nice, which is good, but... I am, you're an introvert too? <laughs> yeah, I am. So I, I don't mind the stay in place order or whatever we have, but it is kind of crazy <laughs> Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. But I'm glad you're okay in Virginia there. I've been I've been following you on my Freshers page, my personal page for a long time now. I just had to get you in here. Oh, awesome. Yes. Cool. You are an amazing artist. I mean, when I saw you playing the guitar with the bow, I'm like, oh my God, I have to get her. Oh, wow, thank you. <laughs> that is amazing. So uh, you play the banjo, the guitar, the bass, and we're, I'm sure you play other instruments. How did yeah. you get into music? When did, when did the love for music start? Pretty much in third grade when I first started playing clarinet in my elementary school band, actually. I played my mom's clarinet that she played in her school band. Oh, wow. And yeah, that was the first instrument I learned how to play. And I played a little bit of keyboard in church, but um, yeah, clarinet was first. And I just, I've always loved music. I come from a musical family, so music was pretty much ingrained in me from the start. Oh, that is dope. As a fellow beginner with the clarinet, I started with the clarinet, but I... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. I, was, I thought I was real <laughs> slick because I just told everybody, oh, I, I, my armature is great. They're like, what? 
<laughs> use embouchure a lot too. Yeah, I use them in random sentences. <laughs> I mean, it's cool. But yeah, I don't even play anymore. So I wish I did, but I just don't have the time. <laughs> yeah. So you say you come from a musical family. Your mother played here. Anyone else in your family play or sing? Uh, both of my older brothers sing. Um, my One of my older brothers plays piano really well. Um, we all love music and listen to music pretty much daily. Um, so, yeah, I was exposed to a lot of different kinds of music growing up. R&B, old school, Motown, go-go music, a regional music genre from D.C., um, rock. Yeah, pretty much everything, jazz. Oh, wow. What sort of music stuck out to you then? It was it eclectic from the beginning. Is there something that stuck out in the beginning more than um, anything else? Yeah. So basically when my brothers and my parents would ride in the car, we would always listen to some type of music. And I always loved the R&B that, like the old school 90s R&B that would play. <laughs> and I was long to that. But when I got older, I really started liking rock music a lot. Like Nirvana, Pearl Jam, uh, Jimi Hendrix, all of them. That's basically around the time I started playing guitar. Oh, wow. So when when was it? You say around your teen years? You start playing guitar? Oh, eighth grade. So I don't know how 12, 13, 12, maybe. Awesome. So you heard Jimmy and Nirvana and what, you yeah. know what song that sparked it? Um, Voodoo Child for Jimmy from Jimmy and Nirvana. I liked a lot of their stuff. Probably smells like Teen Spirit because it was easy to play. And, yeah. uh, Oh, well, I started playing because I beat the video game Guitar Hero 2 as well. That's why I started playing guitar. <laughs> and, like, the game had a ton of rock songs on it, so I learned all those or tried to on, like, my actual real guitar that my parents eventually got me once I beat the game. <laughs> and I've just liked Nirvana a lot because it was the easiest to play at the time. Did you find the game helped you at all when you finally got a guitar? I think it did in terms of, like, finger agility. I didn't have to go through the rough callus stage. I didn't have to go through the rough like breaking my fingers in kind of because they've already broken in from playing the game for so many hours um but other than that it didn't really help with actual like technical <laughs> ability but um i think it helped a little bit with strength just hand strength yeah yeah i mean it's a transition for a lot of guitars to say i can beat the game i can play so i mean that's yeah a, that's a transition Plus, it just grew my love for guitar and I didn't have to go through like the, oh, it's so boring. I don't want to practice stage. I never had that. So yeah, that that's, that's a good point. You jump right in. So you get the love of it from the beginning. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What was your first guitar? It was, I think it was a Kramer. I got my mom got from Amazon, but like my first actual guitar was, I still have it. It's an Epiphone uh, special SG cherry red. It's nice. Oh, sweet, sweet. Kind of like the Rosetta Thorn or Rosetta Tharp, like her classic SG, but red. Oh, nice. So did you know about her at that age or is that someone you found her later? In life? No, I found her down the line. Okay. <laughs> okay. I wish that would have been super awesome to know about her. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, years later, I read about her, I think, in a Guardian article. Um, did you immerse yourself in guitar at that time or is it something that you still like could play and put down and not really, you know, it was still a game to you or did you really just pick up the uh, guitar? Pretty much just picked it up. At the beginning, actually, for the first few months, I had an electric guitar, but no amp. So I would have to like stick my ear <laughs> to my picking hand to try to hear what I was doing. <laughs> but uh, I still practiced every day, even without an amp. My brother eventually got me one and then I practiced even more. So it was always just something I haven't really started putting it down until like the past few years. I used to practice basically every day or every other day when I was first starting out. But we'll, we'll get back to this. I think the no amp sort of aided in your sound now, I think. Yeah, I, I well, yeah, I've actually never thought of it like that, but I guess it did. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, do you sing as well? No, I used to sing when I was really little, but I stopped. Oh, you stopped? Is it something you want to pick back up or you're like, I forget it? <laughs> I mean, right now it's kind of an eh, forget it, but I mean, maybe. I Maybe if I get bored with guitar only, I'll start singing at some point. But right now, nah. <laughs> I got you, I got you. So, you, I mean, you, since you come from a musical family and you picked up the guitar, you graduated with the BM from NYU, didn't you? Yeah, I did. So in between that time, were you self-taught all that time? Did you do lessons? Did you have any like church gigs or anything between there? I did lessons for two months, maybe. 
and I quit because I kind of outgrew my teacher. Oh, wow. Um, he could teach me what I wanted to learn. That was when I was starting to get interested into acoustic guitar and fingerstyle playing. Mm-hmm. And he was like kind of like a rock and blues guy. And I was like, yeah, okay, I'm over it. So I quit that. <laughs> and I'm basically self-taught. Yeah, pretty much self. Well, am self-taught. For those who are self-taught, how did you go about it? Was it books? Was it YouTube? Was it just by ear? Um, By ear. Basically only by ear. Um, I would try to look up guitar videos on YouTube but it was just never really all that interesting to me because it was something else some or it was something someone else was doing I kind of wanted to come up with my own styles and my own solutions to my own problems also finding someone who looked like me playing was kind of impossible so I kind of just didn't care about <laughs> looking at other people okay girl I hear you <laughs> I totally understand <laughs> yeah that. that's why I was like if I had seen Rosetta Tharp I maybe would have been more interested but uh Yes, yeah. yes. I feel it's either, you know, no offense to anyone, but as, you know, a black woman, you go on yeah, YouTube, it's exactly. a lot of older white guys playing feet exactly. tapping. <laughs> right, and it's like, that's great and all, but uh, I'm like four foot eleven. Like, I'm really sure I have small hands. I can't really relate to it. This isn't really helpful for me, so I kind of just had to find my own way. Exactly. So, I mean, you're amazing. Being self-taught and then deciding that you want to go to NYU for music school. Why NYU and not, you know, the, the Berkeley's or the Juilliard's? Um, I visited Boston, uh, where Berkeley is, and I didn't like the city at all. I was got, It was between Northeastern University and NYU, and I just didn't particularly like the city. And NYU just had a, probably the best music tech program, which is what I went to the school for at the time. That's what I wanted to major in. So... Yeah, but I ended up majoring in composition because music tech just wasn't for me. Not enough composing, way too techy. <laughs> and yeah, so I switched out of there and went to composition. And I, it was great. NYU is a really great school. Yes. Um, it was. It was just super fun. Just it was great to be surrounded by so many talented people, and we were all basically trying to achieve the same goals. It was. It was nice. Yes, I mean a lot of uh, people that we interviewed. Um have gone a lot have have and there's there's plus and minuses to both what do you mm-hmm. consider the plus and minuses of going to school or not in your opinion um pluses networking is probably the biggest plus um meeting people who have similar goals to you and are actually serious about achieving them is also a huge plus because at the time I wasn't too serious I knew I wanted to do something in music but I didn't know if I could actually make being a guitar player like a professional player work I didn't really know if that was viable and going there kind of taught me that it was um, minuses you become kind of indoctrinated in a sense taking so many music theory classes it's really easy to get caught up in composing in one way one super old super Eurocentric Western European music way um, and you can kind of lose your own style in that but um, that was pretty much the only minus I think and just well the school is hard too that's kind of a minus <laughs> like I had to take science classes math classes a bunch of classes Berkeley is just music so yeah. that would have probably been easier for me but um whatever I like academics too so it's fine but yeah yeah especially more pluses than minuses I think for sure in New York being one of like the music hubs do so you find like Oh yeah, I kind of forgot to mention that. Yeah, New York City. Um, if you're going to go to music school anywhere, go there. Like, there's so many places to play. I barely had time to play anything because I didn't want to fail my classes, but <laughs> I still found time on the weekends or something to gig, and it was super fun. And there's so many venues there too. It's impossible to not play somewhere, pretty much. Exactly. Do you find like since it had so much music and people who were off campus that were self-taught and had a different vibe or a different feel, do you find you learned as much out of class as you did in? Did I learn as much out of class as I did yeah, in class? Yeah, because you're in New York. They have so many musicians. Oh. Of different- oh, gosh. Yeah. I mean, even just listening to street musicians or subway musicians, it, it's a whole thing. Like I learned a ton out of class, just how the business is, how to book gigs yourself and try to make money and try to find people to play with. I learned probably more out of class than in class. For sure. Just living there and being in that scene. Yeah, and you say you went for composition because your latest single is called Dragonfly, which 
is so beautiful and transcendent. Like Thank that you. song is amazing. <laughs> I put that on, it like takes you to another place. Like, I wonder what she was thinking when she writes this music. Because it seems <laughs> it's so nothing. It's, just nothing. It's, not, it's really nothing. <laughs> like it's just nothing. I wish I could have a good story for that. But yeah, most of the songs that I write start off as doodles. And then I might write it down or and forget about it and then come back to it. And it's kind of like a puzzle piece. Like I have various little clips of things that I come up with and maybe piece it together and make a song like that. Oh my! God. I'm rarely thinking about a specific thing. Oh no, 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 no! You have to tell me you dream about butterflies and rainbows and you sit by you sit by pond. <laughs> I definitely do not. I love nature, but I mean, uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, uh, it's it's still amazing. Like you just wake up with like a line or melody, or yeah, that happens. Okay, and then I kind of just either write it down or record it somehow, and just build upon it. It takes me months to finish songs, if not years. Were you writing songs prior to school, and you just developed it in college, or is this something that you? Yeah. Okay. I wrote a lot of songs in college. Um, Like most of my first album was written in college. Some songs like Restless Heart was written before, like in high school. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, college, I had a lot of time in my hands to work on music. So I developed a lot there, but it still takes me a long time to finish anything. (laughs) I can tell you're so like, it's like a weave, like a basket weave of like sounds. That scene had to take you a while to get that put together. It's, It's very intricate. I love your sound. And Thank you. I appreciate you're that. You're very welcome. Speaking of your sound, like I said, you play um, banjo. First of all, let's hit on that. I can name on oh. one hand the African Americans that play banjo, especially women. <laughs> so where did that Same. come from? I, I can think of, of one. <laughs> Ryan and Giddens. Um, it came from, I well, funny story. So I originally picked up banjo because in my high school we were I was in the pit orchestra and the musical they were doing was my sophomore year maybe was Oklahoma. I don't know if you've yes, ever seen yes. that, but there's band. There. Yeah. So the person leading the pit was like, Oh, do you think you can, there's no guitar in this, but um, there's banjo. Do you think you can learn how to play banjo? And I was like, yeah, okay. So I bought a banjo from a friend for a weekend and then learned how to play. <laughs> but then the parts were taken out. <laughs> so then I <laughs> didn't have to play anything in the pit orchestra. But then I picked it up again recently. And yeah, it's fun. I really like banjo. It's hard. What is it tuned to? Um, I tune it to open, what is it? G, I think it is. Okay. Yeah, I usually capo up to open A. But yeah. That seems difficult. Was it like a weird transition? It's- no, because I kind of still play banjo as a guitar player, so I kind of, it's kind of like fingerstyle. I don't know the claw hammer or like the traditional banjo um, technique yet. It's more comfortable for me to play like a fingerstyle, shrug style banjo, but it's hard because it's so fast. Like every song is super fast. I don't know how, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how they do it. Every song is like 200 beats per minute. Exactly. <laughs> I don't understand. I can't work up speed yet, but I'm spending more time learning Cora now anyway, though, so banjo's taking a seat a bit. Oh, you're learning Cora right now? Yeah, for my second album, yeah. Oh, shut the front door. I think we just posted someone that plays that recently. <laughs> nice. Wow. I love that instrument. It's it, I've loved it for years now, though. I'm happy I can actually own one. Where did that come from? Because I'd never heard of that until recently. Oh, so... Well, I first heard of it in early high school, maybe, or middle of high school. Um, I found it on YouTube, some players, and it was just so beautiful. I recently got one from a guy I know who runs a store called Dream Guitars. He had a core in his personal collection, and he doesn't really play it, so he was selling it, and I bought it. So, (laughs) for super cheap. Oh, nice. It's super nice. Yeah, and there's a local player here that taught me how to string it up and keep it in tune and yeah it's working out that seems like a daunting instrument to tackle though (laughs) well yeah it has 21 strings and it's nothing like guitar at all it's like a harp um, isn't it yeah it is a harp yeah it's 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 a journey but (laughs) it's so fun like it's just really meditative to play wow I've seen bass and of course guitar where where did the thought come from let me put a bow to this acoustic guitar and try this out um, I got that idea from a specific band actually called Sigur Ross, the Icelandic um, 
kind of post-rock band. I don't know if you've ever heard of no. them, but the lead singer plays guitar and sings at the same time, and he plays his guitar with a bow. He plays electric guitar with a bow, and it, he gets like super haunting melodic um, lines out of it. So I tried it on electric first, and it sounded horrible. It was just like a dying dog. <laughs> I don't know how he does it. But I switched to acoustic and I could get like a, at least like a, a drone out of it. So I just typically use it for that. Yeah. <laughs> I still can't get it to sound good on the electric guitar at all. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely meditative, the sound. I have to look that person up because I, I, li- I like the sound that it, you know, invokes. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, the band is super awesome. Like their music is great. So like you said, your finger style, because I'm someone now, I'm just trying mm-hmm. to delve into finger style because it's my nemesis. So, but uh, um, <laughs> I love the Beatles. Beatles? The Beatles. That's the first song I learned was Blackbird. Yeah, someone told me Blackbird. Someone told me to learn Landslide. Those are the first two I need to learn. Those are definitely the first two you need to learn. <laughs> that is good information. So when you got that, for someone who came from rock, but as I said in the beginning, not having a, a, a amp and you say you had to put your head to it, did that help you sort of, because you had to literally just pick it because you really couldn't hear the sound. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. do you think that sort of, you know, grew your love for finger style? I don't, I wish I could say yes, because that's actually really cool. But no, <laughs> I thought that the acoustic guitar was pretty lame when I first started playing because I'd only ever seen singer songwriters use it and they only play like four chords and that's about it. I had no idea that um, until I found some other finger style guitar players on YouTube that you could do anything else other than play the four chords and do whatever, strum or whatever. So once I discovered that, that kind of opened up a whole new um, world and I pretty much dropped the electric guitar and (laughs) delved straight into um, finger style percussive acoustic guitar playing yeah because also as you're playing don't you also like have i don't know what it's called like a slab on the floor that you do percussion on oh yeah i use tap shoes now yeah that's more of a recent development okay i've started using two tap shoes now and basically that came about because in one of my songs it was it's gitka actually that was the song um where I use the kalimba and play guitar at the same time. I ran out of hands, (laughs) basically, and I wanted to do percussive stuff. So at first I was using my elbow, and then I was like, well, I can only get one sound out of that. I don't have four arms. So then I was like, oh, well, I can use my feet like drummers, like like a person playing a drum kit would do, and just use tap shoes. And that actually worked out pretty well. I'd never used tap shoes or really seen one beforehand but it worked out yeah i mean how did i mean i understand like, all this evolved it's, i mean it sounds you're making it sound so seamless is it was it was <laughs> it, it seamless? I mean, it wasn't no <laughs> i mean <laughs> well actually the tap shoe kind of what it, it was weird i really didn't have to practice much maybe for a couple of days to get it to do what it was supposed to do but it was strange i mean i don't know it was probably more seamless than it should have been i'm probably just lucky but um yeah, no. A lot of this required thought because I have kind of weird problems <laughs> that I couldn't really ask anyone else about. So I kind of had to come up with creative solutions. <laughs> like playing lap tapping style anyway. Yeah. That was only because um, my hands are super small and it's kind of hard to reach certain frets or do what I wanted to do or do what I heard in my head. And lap tapping was a way to do percussive sounds and play guitar actual notes at the same time and do tapping too because Guitar Hero has a lot of tapping and I always really like that sound. <laughs> so it all sends back to the video game. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. Hey, they, they made an incredible artist. If that's where it comes from, you're amazing. <laughs> so oh, gosh. no, seriously, um, even your look is eclectic. I like your look as well. Um, what, <laughs> what is all this? What do, you, what do you consider your style if you had to name it? What kind of artist are you? <laughs> <laughs> no idea. No? <laughs> um, I've, I don't know. I don't, I just usually go off of what other people say. Oh, really? <laughs> I don't have, I mean, I don't know. I don't really know. I mean, now it's shifting towards world music, but I'm not a world music musician. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't really only play finger style either. I, I don't know. I'm more of just a composer than I guess a finger style guitar. Yeah. I mean, guitar is just my instrument that I prefer. I was going to say in the intro, she's a composer folk soul artist but I, I mean having talking to that's you that's nice you like that <laughs> <laughs> i like that soul is good <laughs> like that's very nice okay use that okay i'll use that i don't want to offend i don't want to say 
<laughs> no, that's not offensive at all. I mean, typically other people can come up with much better descriptions of what I do than I can. I kind of just do whatever. So I don't really know <laughs> what to call it. Uh, what was your first experience like when you had the whole thing together, the look, the sound, the tap shoes, and you went out there and you did it? What was that experience oh, like? Um, the first time I used the tap shoe in a live performance was actually in the finale of a talent show. Um, it was Cold Pepper's Talent, um, Cold Pepper's the City in Virginia. And I won that. It was really cool. It was. It went really well. That was probably the first time I actually like had the whole tap shoe thing. Like the bow was in it, and my clothes were nice. And I. That was. Yeah. That show kind of told me how I wanted to present myself on stage from then on. So um, that's what I've been doing. But yeah, it worked out. Yeah, that's great. I've seen you. Um, you've done was it Sober, and you've done uh, NPR. Yeah, I've done a ton of so far sound shows. NPR um, was on there a couple times. Yeah, uh, played the Kennedy Center. Shut the front State. door, Kennedy Center. Yeah, Millennium Stage. It was that was really cool. You have your own assistant. She was really nice. <laughs> <laughs> Big time. I wasn't used to that at all. I always felt so bad asking her to do something because I'm like, I'm not. I can just do it myself. But, yeah, I'm still not used to that. But cool. yeah, that was really fun. So how long has this journey been from, you know, from college to actually doing this? Is this full-time that you do music? Now, yeah. Okay. Recently, yeah, been full-time. How long has the journey but been for you to get to where you the are? The crazy thing is I've only been performing out, like, since I released my album in 2018. So basically, March was probably, I think, like, my first show show. Stop it. 2018. To, so, like, two years you are so polished to where it seems like you've been doing this for a while. That's the crazy thing. Yeah, people say that. And I'm like, no, I really don't know what I'm doing, guys. I don't know. <laughs> I'm still learning how to book shows. I don't really know. I'm still learning about contracts. And I've done a lot in the past couple of years, which is nice. But it's also kind of daunting. Wow. So what were you, what do you like offstage? What were you doing before then? What do you like to do besides music? Um... <laughs> 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 music is, is is it um sports i like sports but other than that i mean i don't know i was kind of a perfectionist when it came to school so that took up a lot of my time oh. other than music was kind of like an outlet to get away from you know homework or whatever i was doing sports so but music is definitely the funnest thing i think that i do so this quarantine all your creative juices are just like on high right now on like 10 <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Well, I mean, like, I kind of. I mean, I've been sleeping more, trying to catch up on my sleep. But <laughs> other than that, yeah, I'm trying to finish this album. So writing a lot of music, hopefully to be released later this year. <laughs> awesome, looking forward to that. So we always have to ask our guests, because a lot of people like to know what people play, any pedals, anything like that. So what's, what's your rig? Oh, um, I just got, <laughs> funny you asked that. <laughs> I just got like a couple weeks ago. I finished my acoustic guitar pedal board because I had one for electric, but not acoustic. I got a Strymon Big Sky. Um, love that thing. The reverb yeah, pedal. Yeah, classic. Uh, yeah. I have a lot of pedals. I have like 13 maybe. Oh, wow. But um, yeah, that's probably my favorite one. I also have a cool sidechain pedal that I use sometimes, <laughs> which is nice. What's your guitar? Um, the main one that I usually see on your IG, the acoustic. The main one is um, a custom guitar by Skytop Guitars. That is by far my favorite thing ever. <laughs> it's so cool and it's so easy to play and just super nice. How do you like your action on your guitar since you do a lot of fingerprint? It has to be like really low, right? It is excessively low. Yeah. I love it. Like no finger cramps, no problems, no calluses, nothing. It's great. Oh yeah, that's sweet. Do you have um, any endorsements or anything like that? Anything you're looking to play or anything you want to try out? Like I want to try out this or? I have endorsements i am uh, sky top guitars i just got a harp guitar a couple months ago Word. um i'm endorsed by timberline guitars yeah harp guitar that's also super cool um six sub uh, bass strings and six regular strings learning how to maneuver that wow. <laughs> um ghs strings um chef capos i'm sponsored by them um black mountain thumb picks and i use Capezio tap shoes too 
That's awesome. Oh, and just this is just for me. Where do you get those awesome hats? That's just for me. That's just no. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> my hats. <laughs> I don't know where my grandma is like a hat fanatic and she has like the best taste in hats. So she usually either her or my um, aunt, they both get me really cool hats. Okay. So I don't really get them. (laughs) They just give me whatever they (laughs) like for real. Like, come on. (laughs) That is awesome. I just pick out like shirts I wear. That's pretty much all I pick out. (laughs) And as a, as a, as a, uh, a fellow sock person i love socks yours are on point <gasps> yeah you have no idea i'm like a novelty sock freak like what do you want for christmas socks oh my god <laughs> i'm so happy right now i always thought that was so weird no because i care way too much about socks you have no <laughs> like, idea since i was young the socks don't match it's not there it's done yes yes <laughs> It's in the trash. It's over. <laughs> like my family knows my aunts give me it's like, I found these. They just give me random, just randomly. I found these socks. Like, yes, you're my favorite. I wish my family did that. They don't, man. <laughs> Whatever. It's all, right. it's all good. It's all good. <laughs> but yeah, the sockdrawer.com is where I get my cool socks from. Don't tell me that. I know what I'm doing once we get off the line. Don't do that. Uh- <laughs> Dude, oh, okay. Like all of my cool socks, the sock drawer. <laughs> Look on there. So, um, since you've been doing this for two years and the journey that you had to become where you are and just to be the great, and you seem very humble as well. Like it's just down to earth. Thanks. What do you want to? <laughs> what do you want to tell other artists, young, old, coming up? What do they? What should they expect? What do they? What do their mindsets mindset be getting into this? What would you tell them? Um, I would say don't expect anything. Okay. Because I didn't <laughs> just release the best music that you can and release something that you're proud of and things will come eventually. Also, just be yourself. That seems to work well for me. Sometimes people feel compelled to change themselves to fit whatever image they think will sell something or will generate money. But that's not a good long term plan. I would say just stick to what is true to you and don't compromise on anything, really. And yeah, it's just really about the music. Just write, just write, 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 write all the time. And eventually you'll get to where you want to be or somewhere close. (laughs) For sure. That is amazing advice. And tell the people where they can follow you, get your music and all that. So yeah, follow me on Instagram, guitar.yaz, guitar.yaz. And I'm on Facebook too. I'm just under my name. And Spotify, YouTube, Apple Music, all my name. Yeah. I'm pretty much everywhere. Bandcamp too. Awesome. Well, we want to thank Yasmin Williams for joining us on our podcast today. She's a great artist and definitely buy her music, follow her, check out her YouTube videos and don't go to the sock website. That's just for me. That was for me. I'm, I may cut that out. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> you don't want anybody to steal your swag. <laughs> and again, I want everybody to be safe out there and we'll catch y'all next time. Yasmin, thank you. Thank you for You're having me. Welcome. Later y'all. Hey, Riff Girl, what you got? If you want to learn more about this lick, hit us up on Facebook or Instagram at Fret Sisters or email us at fretsistersmusic at gmail.com. Peace and love.